So welcome to the January edition of uh, Cancer Prevention and Wellness um, presented by the Cancer Survivors Park Alliance. Uh, my name is Jeff Jaguar and I'm your host. Uh, I am recovering from this virus that's going around that you probably have heard of. And uh, so hopefully I won't have any coughing issues, but uh, if, if I do, uh, forgive me uh, up front. Um, so we are entering this season of, um, of resolutions, and um, we thought it would be a good time to talk again about diet. Um, not so much, uh, you know, after the holidays, uh, weight loss diet, but uh, an actual dietary plan, which is a, a lifestyle uh, choice uh, in the form of a, a plant-based uh, eating diet. So. Um, before we get started, and I'll introduce our, our speaker, um, everybody uh, on the call will be muted, um, but uh, the chat feature will be open and we'll monitor uh, that for any kind of questions. Uh, the other thing is uh, this session is being recorded uh, and will be available in 24 to 48 hours at the Cancer Survivors Park uh, website. Uh, which is uh, cancersurvivorspark.org. Uh, um, so tonight we're, we're pleased to have um, Finley uh, Nadler, who's a uh, registered dietitian and nutritionist uh, at the Center for Integrative Oncology and Survivorship uh, at the Prisma Cancer Institute. And um, she's going to talk about uh, plant-based eating, but you know, some of the scientific evidence that supports it uh, as a uh, means of, of preventing cancer, uh, preventing a recurrence of, of cancer, uh, and preventing a, a lot of chronic diseases that seem to um, influence uh, the American uh, lifestyle. So, um, Finley, welcome, and thanks so much for being here and uh, putting this together and spending your time uh, on this uh, kind of um, 
uh, before the snowstorm uh, of the winter of 22 comes uh, Thursday night. That's right. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for having me again. Um, it's always a pleasure to do things with the Cancer Survivors Park. And like Dr. Jagir, I'm also recovering from this virus as well, but um, hopefully with with just some water by my side, I'll be okay. So again, yeah, I apologize in advance for any any disruptions with that. So um, like Dr. Jagir said, I will talk a little bit about plant-based eating because some of you on the call, plant-based eating is something that you're just starting with, something that you're just wrapping your head around. Um, and so we'll kind of dive in just a brief um, explanation about plant-based eating. And then some of you have been maybe trying at this um, for a while now and, and also succeeding at this for a while now. And so um, this, this is also gonna be important for those to help um, just you know, get more information, get more motivated and you know, just more reason to continue um, this kind of lifestyle choice like Dr. Jagir said. So. So first off, what is plant-based? Um, I'm going to list a few of the types of diets that you may see online, on magazine titles, on book titles, on certain recipe titles. And so just so you guys kind of have a clear definition of these types of diets, um, th but these are all types of plant-based diets. So plant-based is a large umbrella term and there's a lot of different diets that kind of fall underneath this umbrella term and basically if you are making the foods that come from plants the majority and and the priority of your meals and your snacks <coughs> you are likely eating plant-based you know you may not be vegan or, um, you know, follow one of these diets to a T, but if that's kind of what you're striving to do, then you could call yourself a plant-based eater. Um, I would say whole food plant-based is, um, probably the most trending right now. So that's basically, um, a diet that's based on whole foods, fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, um, it, it really does minimize fish, chicken, um, dairy, eggs, and um, a lot of processed foods too. Um, and oil comes along with that. So um, if you see a recipe that mentions whole food plant-based, don't be shocked that, you know, it, that it doesn't call for oil <coughs> or um, maybe some of these other common ingredients. Um, the Mediterranean- Emily, what's a tuber? A tuber, I believe, is, um, I could be getting it mixed up with either like a potato in the potato family, like, okay. a, like a root vegetable, maybe. <coughs> um, so whole food, nonetheless, you know, right. it's coming, coming from the ground and it's minimally processed. Um, and then these are some other diets that you guys may have heard of, Mediterranean diet, you know, kind of doing more of those flavors of, you know, Greece, Italy, um, still focuses on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, maybe focuses more on like nuts and seeds and healthy oils, healthy fats, like olive oils, avocados, fish, things like that. And then vegetarian, where you're, you're really just, just limiting your meat products and you could still get, you know, protein from dairy and eggs. Vegan is, is similar to whole food plant-based um, where there's, you know, nothing from an animal, no animal der uh, derived foods at all. Um, flexitarian, I think is kind of a, an upcoming term too. It basically means you're, you're maybe plant-based some, you go meatless some nights, you're vegetarian some nights, but, you also include some dairy, some fish, and occasional meat here and there. Um, and then pescatarian is going to be mainly vegetarian type of eating, but you'll still include some fish and some feed, seafood here and there. So it's fair to say that any of these diets, I mean, some are a little bit more 
uh, stringent than others, but mm -hmm. any of them are an improvement over the um, normal uh, Western diet. Exactly. You're still going to be, you know, focusing on having those brightly colored fruits and vegetables. Those plant foods are going to be more a part of your diet this way. Um, and so that kind of leads me into my next slide of, you know, why, you know, why are we wanting more of these plant-based foods, you know, in our meals and um, why, why do we need more color? Um, there's a lot of scientific evidence um, that's, that's, you know, shows eating, you know, more plant foods does help protect us from cancer and other chronic diseases like type two diabetes and heart disease. Um, I'll include my references at the end of the, of the slides too, um, but a lot of this is from the American Institute of Cancer Research, which is a great um, organization. Um, you know, they, they say that studies show that cancer survivors who do consume more vegetables and fruits in their day-to-day, -day, they, they do live longer cancer-free lives, which, you know, I don't know about you, Dr. Jagir, but that's that's something that I'm going to, you know, help my patients try to do. That's who you see. And, and, and that's, uh, I mean, we are what we eat and, um, you know, I've, I've certainly been a convert. Yes. Um, and so let's just kind of dive right into it. I'm going to share with you guys some of my favorite tips, um, that has helped me go to, you know, more plant-based and to be, for it to become, like Dr. Jagir said, more of a lifestyle, just becomes part of your, your palate. You know, it's, it's what you want to eat. And so um, I usually say, you know, start off easy. Any kind of goal that you want to set for yourself, you should make these obtainable. Um, and so with, with plant-based eating, Think about the animal foods that you already may not eat very often. You know, what, what's, what are some meats that you may not eat very often already? Um, or, you know, if there's a certain type of dairy product um, that you already don't really eat that much, then go ahead and make it a point to yourself to kind of, all right, let's just cross that one off the list or let's just note to kind of start limiting that so we can kind of keep moving forward with this. Um, so don't give up all your favorite things <laughs> all at once, you know, don't kind of quit cold Turkey, make maybe a list. And I would recommend a physical list, you know, not just a mental one, make a list of, of your least favorite animal foods all the way down to your favorite, you know, type of meats or, um, you know, dairy foods, things like that, and kind of slowly you know, cross them off to, to make it to a point to, to limit these foods and find replacements for them, which we can talk about. You're, you're wanting to find some plant-based proteins to replace maybe some of these foods with. You know, one of the things that I've noticed too is that there may be a, you know, at present times an economic mm -hmm. uh, reason to be avoiding um, meats uh, because, you know, we're under inflationary pressure now, and it, it appears that uh, the meats are the, the, the most expensive. I saw something where in the last six months, I mean, ground beef is up 14%. Uh, bacon, um, which, which we probably ought to be not talking about, is up 21%. So um, just from the standpoint of uh, fiscally responsible uh, food buying, uh, in this day and age, uh, meats are more expensive. Exactly. Um, and so some of our plant-based proteins like beans are going to be something that you can keep in your pantry. Um, and, you know, they, they're, <coughs> they're there for when you need them. And, and they're like Dr. Jagir said, much um, less expensive than some of, some of the meats. So that's definitely a good point. Um, and if you, if you are ready or liking a vegetable or, you know, another type of plant food, then 
eat more of that, you know, look for recipes that include more of these plant-based foods that you already eat and you already enjoy so much. And so not only eat more of them, but make sure that you're stocked with these foods and so making sure your, your, your fridge, your pantry, your freezer are, um, you know, stocked with these plant foods that you enjoy the most so that you're more likely to consume these more often. Um, one of the things that I've started to try to do is keep a lot of non-perishable plant-based foods and a lot of frozen plant-based foods, you know, in the freezer, in my pantry. And I find recipes that include these, you know, staples, you know, these pantry staples or these, these freezer staples. And I keep those recipes, you know, on file and, you know, on hand close by. And so I have a list of these recipes. This is what this third, <coughs> this third tip says to build toward a list of meals that you can pull together quickly from these items. Um, so if you're in a pinch, or you know you're you haven't gone to the grocery store, and you know you don't you don't really know what to make. You can you know look to this list, know that you have some of these staple uh, food items, and you can make still make a great meal and a well balanced meal out out of these. And I'm going to give an example of one of mine. A go bit to's. Later. What was that? What are your go tos? Yeah, my go tos. Right. I'll, I'll I'll tell you guys uh, and I'll show you guys a recipe um, a little bit later on. But just kind of be thinking, you know, what are some of your favorite beans, um, your favorite nuts, uh, some of your favorite frozen vegetables, maybe, or you know, the the different vegetable medleys and all the things that you could create from that. Um, and then just different types of stock, you know, vegetable stock. You know, being able to make that make that a part of your pantry staple too. And, and we don't necessarily think of, of plant-based eating as, as weight reduction uh, diet, <clears throat> but we, we are aware that there's, um, you know, high density calories uh, in, you know, some of the beans and some of the vegetables where, so you do feel like you're, you're filling up um, without a lot of calories being consumed. Exactly. So, Really, when you're replacing a animal protein or an animal product with a plant-based protein, you are you are getting rid of a lot of sat maybe saturated fat and the calories that come with that um, and the protein. But then you're also replacing it with more plant-based protein and fiber. You know, a lot of our plant foods will have fiber, which our animal foods do not. And that fiber helps us feel full because um, it, it goes slowly down our digestive track and kind of knowing what you're able to tolerate in that regard. Um, and then, like you were saying, they're very um, nutrient dense. You know, a lot of these beans and nuts and seeds have so, so many, they're compact with vitamins and minerals per serving um, that some of these animal products do not have. So exactly. Um, and just an overall guideline. Um, I was <coughs> grown up to, 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 I was told, my mom told me that every meal should have something green on it. So I've, I've grown up with, you know, if something wasn't green on my plate, something was missing. And so that's just, that just goes to say, you know, have some color with, with your meal. So every meal should have a fruit, a vegetable, or both, you know, if you can't do both, um, if you want to kind of save your fruit for maybe a snack or a certain, another meal, that's fine. But, you know, try to squeeze in a vegetable of some kind and try to make things more colorful. Um, and so when you kind of think about looking down at your plate, you kind of want to make half of that vegetables. So, you know, like you, the ones you see here um, or some greens, and then the fourth of that plate being whatever grain that you're going to do. So hopefully you're going to choose some type of whole grain. 
Um, if not, try to make at least half of the grains that you choose during your day whole grain. So um, brown rice, quinoa, you know, farro, oats, you know, different things like that. Um, you know, try to make that the other fourth. And then whatever you're going to do for your protein, the other fourth. And so we can kind of talk about, um, I think plating has a lot to do with success too. We don't like to think that we're all about looks, but you know, if we look down at a plate and it doesn't look very full or um, satisfying, we eat with our eyes first. So kind of learning how to plate, you know, are you using a plate or can you use a bowl? How, you know, what's gonna help make it look like this is a, a bounty, you know, that you're about to eat and it's gonna be satisfying. So I think- Gotta have that good presentation. Good presentation, yeah. it does go a long way, especially if you have kids um, or guests that you're trying to impress, <laughs> it does go a long way. And um, we eat with our eyes first, we definitely do. Um, and so just some meal planning tips, because I know a lot of people, um, when they start, you know, to eat more plant-based, they find themselves in the kitchen, maybe a little bit more than they used to be. And so a meal <laughs> planning tip that you could try to think to start doing is when you're already in the kitchen, cooking, let's just say some brown rice for a meal that you're, you're going to make, why don't you go ahead and just double up the amount of rice that you're that you're cooking or double up the amount of quinoa that you're cooking and think of ways you can reuse it throughout the week and I'll show you guys some examples here in a, in a few slides <coughs> um, same thing with beans because we can cook <coughs> beans ahead of time and be able to use beans in a different way um, they also freeze very well or if you can make some bean patties and freeze those um, so just be able to kind of you're cooking a grain or a bean add a little bit more so that you can can use those leftovers throughout the week um, same thing with vegetables if I'm already cutting up a vegetable for a certain recipe that I'm eating that night can I go ahead and cut up the rest of the vegetables so they're easy to snack on like if you're cutting up a carrot for a soup can you go ahead and cut up the carrot in little sticks or you know snack size pieces so um, you're more likely to kind of grab those choices if they're already prepared that way so it's just just I tell it's just the past you looking out for future you you know what can you be helping yourself out um, as the week goes on and so we'll get into some recipes now um, this is an example if you if you cooked some quinoa for a side at a for a recipe or if you cooked it for like a salad to have at a meal go ahead and, and make a little bit more and this is actually a way that you could use it for a breakfast and you know we don't usually think of quinoa as a breakfast but we could actually use it as a oatmeal replacement or this ingredient <coughs> or this recipe uses both oats and quinoa um, and so this this recipe would actually serve you, I would say, four servings. So this is kind of like a bulk recipe that you can maybe use and have on throughout the week. Um, and so it just kind of shows you a way that you could use these leftover grains um, whenever. That looks great. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a great presentation. And, and I see two tablespoons of maple syrup, too. Yep. Just kind of like elf, you know, yes. <laughs> some, some natural sweetener there, or, you right. know, some, sometimes if you can get away with only one tablespoon or, you know, adding a little bit more vanilla and, or some, some cinnamon, then more power to you. That's definitely a good way to just sweeten things up if you, if you want. Um, if you're not a very sweet person in the morning, I know I was talking to a patient today that, um, she was all savory, so you didn't want anything sweet in the morning. And so that's when you can maybe use your leftover beans. You know, if you cook a little extra black beans or pinto beans, can you throw um, some beans, you know, to kind of make like a Tex-Mex type of 
breakfast in the morning, you could use it, um, you know, over some polenta or even be able to mash some beans on a piece of toast um, and then adding some vegetables on top of that. You know, we don't always have to have the standard American breakfast that we're maybe so used to growing up on. Um, I think learning how to top our toasts in different ways just to make sure you have a protein with everything can be a good way to add some savory stuff too. And so I think, I think this, I, I added um, the reference to this recipe in my reference list, but she's, <coughs> I remember her blog, she's a dietitian. So whenever I am looking for recipes, I do try to see, you know, is this a dietitian that kind of created this? Right. Because Usually if they are a dietitian, um, they've thought really, thought the recipe, you know, pretty well through, it's well balanced and more than likely they're going to have a nutrient analysis on it. So there's going to be basically like a nutrition label that goes along with those recipes. And so the next one is something that I've recently done. Um, you know, if you already have a potato an, a leftover potato of some kind, um, or any other kind of side dish that you may have used for a dinner the night before. Um, can you add some beans to it to make it like a, you know, a full meal, well-balanced meal for like a lunch? So, you know, I didn't have a full baked potato. I cut them up in cubes and, you know, they're more like the, the bite-sized sweet potatoes, but I still kind of made a, a similar bowl to this and had some avocado on top and some black beans. Um, but yes, can you just add some nuts to a side that you had cooked for a dinner or add some beans to a side um, that you had? And then, or can you make it into a soup? You know, sometimes we can kind of pull together all, all of our leftover sides or vegetables and kind of make them into a soup or a salad, you can put them on top of a bed of greens. So basically just a way to bring new life to some of these leftovers that you already have in your fridge. Um, and so that's just kind of like a really easy way to load up a sweet potato and, and a really quick um, green goddess dressing here on the left side. But if you don't have time to make this dressing you could just take some pesto, mash up an, an avocado with it and kind of give it a good whisk. And that's basically what this is, you know, just to kind of help you cut some corners there. But if you have time to make the real deal, that's awesome too. And that's another great presentation. Exactly. That they, they chose to great, put it in a bowl. Color. Yeah. Um, well, it looks, it looks, looks, you know, full. Very palatable. Exactly. Yeah. And so this is something that I've kept up my sleeve. I've actually got this recipe from a, the purple carrot meal delivery kit. I don't know if you've heard of that, but sure. um, it's, it's the plant-based meal delivery kit, you know, product out there. Um, I will say a lot of their recipes um, do take some time and some care. So, but this one um, I thought was really, really good. It was even got a thumbs up from, you know, the family too. So that's always good. And it's a lot of these rest, a lot of these ingredients you can have in your freezer or in your pantry already. Um, sometimes, I, you know, I always keep a good bag of onions in my pantry because they usually can last a long time. Same with garlic, um, the cannellini beans, having those in a can, um, you know, doing the bouillon cube or some chicken or the chicken or the vegetable stock. Um, and then the smoked paprika pesto is something that I try to keep on hand too, because it's just a really easy way to add flavor to something. Um, and so the arugula is something that we may not have all the time on hand, but sometimes I do try to keep like some frozen greens. So some frozen spinach or some frozen kale it won't give you the same exact turnout but it would still add you know some of that green that you're missing in this recipe you're able to kind of cook it from frozen 
Um, same thing with the carrots and the celery. I try to keep carrots on hand. They usually have a long, um, a longer life in my fridge. Um, but if not, you can always find the frozen, I think it's like a frozen vegetable soup mix where it's like carrots and celery and maybe a few other things, but you could even almost use that frozen medley um, for that. And so it's just been something I've been able to pull together pretty easily. Um, you basically heat the carrots um, and celery up in a pan and then um, put all the other ingredients in it together and you bake it so it's more like a cassoulet and um, then you're able to kind of top it top it at the end when it's baked. So it was really nice, a lot of flavor. And again, here they, they put it into a bowl um, or, you know, whatever else you might like it in. We have little pasta bowls too, that can kind of be a nice dish to use. So, so Finley, you knew this was going to be a question, uh, but in the chat room, um, can you, you know, what is the mechanism for us to share these recipes? Um, yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll work with um, LC about that. Um, but I, you, I think you just had the three recipes, it's right? These three, right. And yeah, uh, so we might be able to find something uh, to have on the Cancer Survivors Park website. Obviously, this, this whole recording will be there, but you don't have to go through the whole process and, and take a screenshot or, or something of that nature. We'll, we'll try to get these recipes uh, to, to a location. Yeah. I don't want to overpromise, but uh, you know, we do have some really, really talented IT uh, capabilities and yeah, so. Um, so hopefully we can get that. But um, no, it it, I, it was in my mind as well. Whoever asked the question, it's a mm -hmm. it's a perfect, uh, it's a very reasonable thing because these all look very very uh, pretty and uh, palatable and uh, uh, for me complicated, uh, but uh, uh, hopefully uh, for most people not. Right, and you know something that. You know, I think this this was probably the one that took a, the most time out of all three. Um, <coughs> these all are on the internet, so if I can maybe find out with LC how to just provide a link, maybe we can we can kind of talk about that. So perfect. Yeah. Um, perfect. One thing we have, we've been commenting on is just the color, right? The color of of this and how how adding color just to a, a meal is going to not only make it look good, but it, it's going to mean that it's good for you too. Um, and so the cannellini beans here are going to be, um, you know, our, our source of protein, the arugula or any other kind of green that you might do is also going to provide us some protein as well. Um, if you wanted to put this over some leftover rice, you could do that as well. Um, but just keep it simple. A patient of mine today was saying how it's helped her to, it's helped her when she realized that every meal does not have to be some extravagant production, you know, keeping it simple. If you like the look of a one sheet pan dinner, something in the crock pot, um, something like the sweet potato recipe where it's just pulling some things out of the pantry together. It's going to be well balanced as long as you, you know, try to make it well balanced. <coughs> it's going to be, it's going to do the job. And so it's just learning how to maybe season things, what type of spices to keep on hand um, to kind of help things taste good. So, um, I so think, I think that I think that's great from the standpoint of not every meal has to be a production. I mean, yeah. to a certain extent, we try to make this as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think this is going to be a very important slide because I mean, uh, for for a guy like me, I, I mean, a, a protein bar is already ready made, and mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't have to necessarily make my homemade protein bars, but. Uh, you know, some insight about, you know, which ones to get and, and what to look for is, is important. Yeah. So I thought I would kind of continue on the, the lesson of convenience and, um, you know, eating more plant-based 
may mean being in the kitchen a little bit more, but I can help share with you maybe some products that are dietitian approved, like these protein bars that can at least make the times that you need something quick and you need something convenient, still knowing that you're kind of go, you know, checking, checking off the boxes and, and on the right path. So some, and then some overall snacking tips. So first, if you think you're hungry, <laughs> maybe try to drink some, drink something, drink some water, drink some low calorie flavored water. Um, or a great go-to is just like maybe some low sodium V8 vegetable juice. Um, it's going to have some great nutrition and can maybe help fill you up, you know, and kind of keep you going. Um, really assess your hunger. You know, are you really hungry or have you just been in the house too long or have you, are you just a little bored or do you just think you're hungry? And so if you're able to distract yourself or just kind of drink something and then go about your day, then you probably weren't hungry to begin with. Um, but that doesn't mean that you, you don't need to snack or you can't snack. You can, um, but when you do, try to pair a healthy carbohydrate with a healthy protein. And so what does that mean? A healthy carb, carbohydrate, is gonna be something that's from a fruit, a vegetable, something with more fiber. So something from a whole grain too, so like a whole grain cracker or some oats or something like that. And so our healthy proteins, I just like to think about, well, if I would <coughs> normally do this with some cheese, what can I do instead? And so some, sometimes that could just be some nuts or some seeds um, or nut butters, anything from a, a nut or a seed, you know, some kind of almond butter or peanut butter a bean spread, so like a hummus or, or even just some smashed beans, you know, making them into almost like a dip or a puree. Um, roasted chickpeas, edamame, which you can get, you know, in steamable bags, which is a great quick um, protein, overall good snack to do. So try to make these pairs of a healthy carbohydrate and a healthy protein. Like I love to do these cherry tomatoes here and dip them in some hummus um, that, that usually keeps me satisfied or just, you know, some, a handful of nuts um, or one of these protein bars. So kind of knowing what's appropriate for you, you know, if you have worked out that day or you've been, you know, more physically active <laughs> that day, then maybe the protein bar is a good choice. Um, if you got quite a long stretch of time before your next meal and you are truly hungry, then maybe something like a protein bar is a good choice, but make sure it has protein. So at least eight grams is going to be worth it to a protein bar. You want you know, low added sugar. And so we know that added sugar is now listed below the total sugar. Um, if there's fiber in there, that's kind of like a bonus, like Dr. Jagir was saying, that kind of helps fill us up and keeps us satisfied. So if there's fiber in the protein bar, that's almost just like another pat on the back you can give yourself. Um, but really you're just trying to look for a really short ingredient list. Um, the RX bars are probably um, well known for their short ingredients list because if you guys have seen on the front of the bar is just the four ingredients listed right there and that's all that's that's in there. So these are just some options if you're at a gas station. I think that's when I usually am at and you know if I'm on a road trip and um, haven't quite planned out my meals very well looking for something like one of these into a in a convenience store or a gas station so these are all from what i remember plant-based so these are all dairy free and um just kind of have some shorter registered dietitian approved protein approved. bars that's okay. the that's the take-home <laughs> message right exactly exactly um, no guilt but no guilt bars. No guilt bars. That's right. Sometimes um, I've I've um, 
sometimes those RX bars are kind of a little hard. <laughs> if anyone has tried them, they're kind of chewy. And so sometimes if I'm, you know, they come in like chocolatey flavors and things like that too. So if I'm kind of in a, in a hunch, you know, for something sweet, I'll heat one of those up in the microwave, kind of warm it up and soften it. And it's almost like a little decadent, guilt-free okay. treat. <laughs> So some of these protein bars can kind of be a, a good dessert replacement too, a little bit more nutrients. I think that might be. Oh, oh no. Finley. Uh, okay. Go, go. Just, just, uh, I guess one of the questions I would have is where do you shop mm -hmm. and what aisles do you go down? Right. And, you know, obviously you get a cart and what are you looking, how do you looking to fill up your cart when you go to the grocery store? Yeah, good question. And it seems like, you know, a, one store on this side of town is completely different in the layout at right. the same store on the other side of town. Um, but, you know, you can't go wrong if you try to stay around the perimeter of the store because if you think about it most stores their produce section is around one side and then it's like you know the dairy <coughs> and the meats and everything else on the other side so that's going to be your least processed foods around the perimeter of the store um you can still find some good stuff in the middle of the store like these protein bars are probably um either maybe towards the pharmacy's side of the store or even where some of the cereals and oatmeals and stuff like that are. Um, I think that that's a good aisle to go into, you know, where the oatmeals are and the baking aisle sometimes, because that can have a lot of our like nuts and seeds and um, like flax seeds and things like that. And then sometimes the nuts are in the aisle where the breads are. So that's another good aisle you could go down because there's some good, you know, choices of some whole grain options where the breads are. And then there's usually some, some nuts and things like that. But really now I, that I, because I think this way of eating is catching on even down here in South Carolina, um, a lot of our, grocery stores are becoming a little bit better with having a lot of these, you know, the ingredients that you may have seen in, in the, the recipes. So like the quinoa should now be right next to the rice. Any other kind of grain is all going to be in that, um, that rice section. Um, and then sometimes another good aisle is the international aisle because we have a lot of these healthy recipes have some more ethnic, you know, <coughs> and so getting familiar with the international aisle too is a good idea. That's a great, that's a great point. You know, uh, for someone that, that goes to the store actually more frequently than I used to, um, the spice racks are overwhelming. <laughs> uh, if you, you know, in, in, in the same stance of trying to keep it simple, keep it easy, are there some, and this may not be a fair question for somebody that's as good a, a cook as you are, uh, is there, are there some go-to spices that you just feel like you add to most of the, of your recipes? Um, no, I think that that is a great question. Um, definitely keeping um, some kind of like either paprika or chili powder, I think is a great um, spice to keep. It not only adds a little bit of flavor, but it adds some really good color to things, which as we've been talking about is important to, to our eating. Um, I, I love Indian food. And so I do make sure that I have, um, if, if not curry, then at least um, maybe some cumin and cumin powder is also in a lot of other types of dishes, you know, not only Indian dishes, but um, I think cumin adds um, a good savory, warm 
you know, flavor to a lot of, of <coughs> um, and then you can't go wrong with your Italian, just your, your, your dried Italian mixture um, can be foolproof um, when you're not really sure what else to add onto something. Um, and know that if you are doing really well with limiting your processed <coughs> food and limiting, you know, your fast foods, then it's okay to sprinkle, have your, have your fair share of, of, of salt, you know, being able to salt your food. I was actually reading an article the other day that said only about 10% of our total sodium intake actually comes from the salt shaker. Nowadays, most of our sodium intake <laughs> is coming from our processed foods or our fast foods. So if you're doing a good job with limiting those, then don't be afraid of, of the salt shaker because that can help with a lot of bringing out a lot of flavor. So you. you brought up Italian. Yeah. <laughs> um, where does pasta, whole grain pasta, where, where does that fit in the, the mix of things? Yeah. Um, I think pasta is, is a little tricky. I don't think you should eliminate it or l completely eliminate it um, if it's something that you really do enjoy. But know that a lot of the foods, the yes, it's from a plant. We, we say, oh, I can eat pasta. It's from a plant. Um, <laughs> but maybe one of those higher, higher carb, higher calories and less nutrients. So it's still maybe one of those those calorie dense foods. So choosing like a whole grain option, like now we usually can find a whole grain spaghetti, whole grain penne pasta, and then maybe some like veggie pastas where they're made of like some spinach or maybe even some chickpeas. So what you're looking for is fiber, <laughs> if you can choose a fiber that's more, if you can choose a pasta that's more fibrous, then that's going to be a, a better choice because it's not going to spike your blood sugars up as high. It's going to take time down your digestive system and kind of keep you full. Um, another option, I think I may have used it in here. You could use, um, you know, some other, maybe some vegetables as your pasta, you know, some spaghetti squash or some zucchini, you know, taking a, a peeler to a zucchini and just making ribbons out of a peeler and kind of making right. that into a pasta. And sometimes we'll do half and half. So we're still having, I just cut back the portion of the real pasta and I make, make up everything else from the vegetables. And that way we're still having the best of both worlds. <laughs> No, I, I think that those are great suggestions, and yeah. and uh, the spaghetti squash. I, I mean, my my wife um, uses that um, liberally. So, uh, so good. go ahead and 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 sum up. And and yeah. um, one of the one of the comments from Gina was, um, you know, if you're going to go to the store, pretty you better get there pretty soon because the winter storm's coming. Right. That's right. <laughs> So kind of think ahead, you know, what can you be making, you know, in the slow cooker? What can you go ahead and make ahead of time? So if we do lose power, you know, it's, it's already there and ready for you. So I know, yeah, <coughs> definitely go. <laughs> but these are just a few examples of what's maybe some small goals to take. And Dr. Jagir, you can definitely chime in with what you, what you know has worked, but I sometimes will tell a patient if I just can tell that they're overwhelmed because they've, they've kind of told me what they usually eat and we've kind of picked apart each of their meals. I don't want them to feel so overwhelmed that they have to completely change every single meal that they have every day. Just pick one, start with one meal that you want to work on, get build habits around that meal and then you'll be able to, to spread into 
next thing you know, you'll be making those good habits with all your meals. So I think it's a really important point. You don't go from a Western diet that you've been used to, um, you know, taking a right or a left off your highway to the drive in and, Mm -hmm. and then the next day become a vegan. Uh, So it's, it's a process. Um, Any uh, step in the right direction is just that. Um, if it was a resolution, uh, I don't know what the statute of limitations are for New Year's resolutions, but um, you know, if if you've already fallen off the wagon, uh, it's okay. I mean, you just go ahead and say, okay, that uh, let's get back on it. Um, so it's it's not one of those things where. Um, you fail if you um, don't fail and give up. Right, right. I think it takes, it says more about who you are if you're able to, you know, start again and and back to it. And just really, really remember why you're doing this, um, who you're doing it for, you know, have you, have you, you know, you know, tried to eat like this in the past and you remember feeling so good, you had more energy. So just try to really connect back to to those types of um, motivators in your life too. And so the other two I already mentioned earlier in the presentation, but again, if you're also just use your eyes, make more of your plate, the vegetables, learn how to plate it. Um, That's definitely something to kind of, you know, start thinking about and then again, with the meal, meal planning, I think it, that's one of the main things is learning what works for you as far as meal planning goes. And if you fall off of that, that is okay. We all have things that come up and we can't meal plan perfectly. And it's just eventually getting back to it. Like you said, so. So there was a question in the chat about, um, you know, if your one meal is breakfast, um, you know, what, what you, you mentioned, um, you know, some of the things you had a, a, a recipe um, for the, for the, for a breakfast option. And then there was the savory breakfast too. I, what, what do you keep available for your, if that's going to be your meal, start out the day with a, you know, with a good start. Um, I always, say try to add color to your breakfast in some way so if you could do a fruit um you know like that that overnight (coughs) oats you know it had the fruit in it um sometimes I'll do that I'll make that ahead of time and I'll use frozen fruit because I I put you know the the grains and and the liquid and some of my seasonings and the frozen fruit and put it in a container and let it sit overnight and the fruit thaws and the the grains you know kind of congeal and and they're made that way so that's something that I'll try to do but make sure I have a protein with it too so some kind of nut that I can keep on hand to sprinkle on top um doing some things with toast, like I mentioned. So like, a, you know, if you have an avocado that you need to, you know, use before it goes bad or even guacamole, if you've made some guacamole, you have leftover guacamole, toast, you know, spread it on a piece of toast. Um, and I love to put, you know, some sunflower seeds or, you know, some kind of, you know, slivered almonds or something like that on top and you could add a little bit of salt on that making it more savory um you could do eggs for breakfast you know eggs they do come from animals but a way to make the eggs more plant-based would be to add color can you add a slice of tomato some spinach mushrooms you know how can you make it more colorful um so you're having that good balance of everything so sometimes I'll hard boil a few eggs, but make sure I pair it with either a fruit or I'll slice it on some toast and put it with some avocado. Um, you know, just try to make it more colorful when I can. So, yeah, I know breakfast can be challenging because right. we never feel like making it. <laughs> right. Um, so it's interesting. You know, I, I when we think about our training and you're closer to your training than I am to mine, but you know, we didn't have 
a whole lot of lectures on nutrition. And I suspect that in your training, I mean, they told you about fats and carbohydrates and proteins and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And was there, was there much in your um, schooling about this kind of a diet? Um, it, or has this been something that you've kind of adopted over, over your professional career? It's something I've definitely uh, I've, I've adopted more of. And I think back about this a lot. Um, I would say in undergrad, we just were taught a lot about um, more the clinical side of things, how to take you know care for patients with certain diseases. Right. Um, and we learned about maybe like the DASH diet, you know, something that's been scientifically proven to help lower hypertension. Um, we learned the gist of like a diabetic diet, um, but neither of those were, you know, outright plant-based. And it wasn't until I got to grad school where I was rotating at a, um, a physical performance lab at the university and they wanted, you know, a dietitian or, you know, a dietitian student on staff to talk with patients while they're there, you know, exercising. And one of the trainers there asked me if I've ever heard, heard of the G of the Dean Ornish diet. Yeah. And that was the first time I had heard of it. And I thought to myself, why didn't, why am I just now hearing about this? I'm a dietitian. You yeah. Know? Right. So when I kind of, heard about the Dean Ornish, I think that kind of opened um, uh, my mind to this type of eating and then um, definitely learned more the more I read about how related it is to cancer prevention. And then, you know, my, this, I landed, this is my second job out of, you know, having my dietetic certification. So I kind of knew that I would be talking about plant-based eating. <laughs> so in your time, uh, how's the reception been to you and, and the plant-based? Has that improved with time? I, I think it really has. Um, and I think it, it helps if, you know, doctors are on board and they've been able to maybe slowly slip the word plant-based somewhere in right. their you know, visits with them. Um, I think that really does help. I think all the prevention programs that we're setting in place helps. Um, and I also think Greenville itself has been, um, you know, opening up more restaurants that have vegan options I, or more restaurants that are now definitely maybe more plant focused that you can kind of see around town so I think that has kind of opened um, a lot of people's mind but I still I mean I still get I still get that those patients sprinkled in that um no are, I'm not gonna do that nah, no, not gonna do that. <laughs> that ain't happening yeah so we try to I try to meet them halfway we talk about you know how can you sneak some vegetables in um can you can you try to cook them this way because I think it, it really is their mom cooked a vegetable. They boiled. They boiled it to death, or right. they they just had yeah. it steamed, and they 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 don't know. They never tried it any other way. So. Never knew the difference. Yeah. Well, Finley, thanks so much for being with us tonight, and um, all the time and effort you you put in putting this together. Uh, here are some of the resources um, that you can use. And again, this thing will be recorded and we'll try to get those recipes out to you, but uh, uh, appreciate your time and efforts and, and uh, the hour you spent with us. Um, so uh, next month uh, on February 10th, so it's the second Thursday of each month from 530 to 630, um, <clears throat> we're going to be um, uh, talking to a certified yoga instructor and uh, alongside a, um, uh, a Qigong uh, uh, instructor um, and talking about some of the uh, ancient practices for health and, and healing. Um, and so that'll be very interesting. Uh, these, these are regular people uh, that uh, have 
um, taken uh, what they've learned from what's been around for thousands of years and um, is available uh, to us uh, locally and they'll share their knowledge uh, with you. So we look forward to having you at that um, session. And um, we normally um, end with a quote. And I think this is apropos to what uh, we've been talking about today. And um, again, uh, for New Year's resolutions, but uh, this is from Maya Angelou, who's going to be on uh, the United States quarter um, going forward. Um, and it's very, very short and sweet. Uh, you do the best you can. And when you know better, do better. So we'll leave you with that tonight and you all have a good evening and everybody be safe out there. Good night. Bye guys. Thank you.